Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1 I'm Sarah, 28 female, and my husband is Luke, 30 male, and we have a sweet little baby boy. Luke and I both hold down full time jobs, and somehow we've managed to make it work. Our lives were cruising along just fine until my stepsister, Jessica, 25 female, hit a major rough patch. Jessica's mother married my dad when I was 19. I wasn't exactly doing the happy dance, but I bit my tongue and tolerated it. However, I found out that Jessica wasn't happy about the whole thing either. We became close, facing the oh-so-awkward family dinners together. Plus, we discovered we had more in common than just an aversion to cringeworthy gatherings. Weeks later, I packed my bags and went off to college on another continent. Jessica and I didn't exactly lose touch, but we certainly didn't keep the conversation flowing as much as we should have and before I knew it. Years had passed and we both got hitched. If there's one thing I know about Jessica, it's her erratic decision making. She has always been what some might call a free spirit. She can't hold down a job for more than a hot minute. And she has this uncanny ability to bounce from one plan to the next like a squirrel on a caffeine high. One day, Jessica called me out of the blue and asked if she could stay in our home for about three weeks. Turned out, she was going through a rough divorce and she had no job, no savings, no kids, and her house. Well, it's legally owned by her soon-to-be ex-husband. Out of sympathy, Luke and I agreed to let her stay with us until she got back on her feet. We thought it would be a temporary thing like a stay while you figure things out kind of deal, but we were so wrong. Fast forward three months after she moved in, the bills started piling up and Jessica's behavior got weirder by the day. Honestly, I began to wonder if she thought she had been starved in her past life because she ate enough for a small army. And chores? I guess that wasn't a thing at all. I knew we said she could stay a few weeks till she figured things out. But it was almost like she thought she was on an all-expense-paid trip here. Luke and I suggested she get a job, but she pulled the I'm depressed card. Don't get me wrong, I understand that depression is a real struggle, but she seemed to be taking it to an entirely new level. And if I'm being honest, her acting skills were far from convincing. Weeks after we had this brilliant idea, why not have her babysit our kid instead of paying for daycare? It was very convenient for Luke and I because our baby's daycare cost a fortune. Jessica agreed, and everything seemed to be falling into place until one afternoon. I came home from work earlier than usual, and my mommy senses were tingling. I noticed a few of my baby's clothes scattered on the living room floor, leading a trail into the guest room, now Jessica's room. As I entered her room, I found that all my baby's furniture, stuffed animals, clothes, and adorable little pictures had been shoved in there like it was some sort of storage room. One of the wooden chairs that Luke had spent a lot of time constructing was even broken. I marched over to my baby's room, fully expecting to find Jessica tending to my child so I could demand an explanation. But the scene that greeted me was beyond belief. First, my baby was crying in a corner, desperately seeking attention that should have been given without question while sweet aunt Jessica was busy adjusting camera angles, talking to herself as if she was hosting the world's most bizarre TV show, and completely ignoring my child's cries. I was livid. Luke and I had poured so much love and effort into crafting our baby's room to perfection, only for Jessica to practically claim squatter's right without the courtesy of a may I and turn it into something else. I asked her what on earth she was doing and why she moved all my baby's things to her room. Apparently, Jessica decided that my baby's room was bigger and better than the guest room she had been occupying. So, without a hint of hesitation, she shifted her stuff there and moved my baby's things to her own room. She then went further to tell me her plans of being a cam girl on a certain porn site. My baby's room had been transformed into Jessica's dream studio for adult content creation. She had managed to bring in more of her things from God knows where and even purchased a mountain of equipment that I couldn't even identify, let alone explain, and I suspect they were bought with the money she was supposed to use to get back on her feet. Naturally, I was speechless. So, I put my foot down and I put it down hard. 
I kicked her out of my house that instant. Of course, she argued, claiming that she needed a space to nurture her creativity and my baby's room was the best place to create content for the adult entertainment world. She told me that we were sisters and she didn't understand why I was not being supportive, considering everything she had been through. I was caught somewhere between dumbfounded and infuriated because she couldn't even see what she had done wrong, but I made sure she got out of my house with all her things. When I thought that the whole drama was over, Jessica took to Facebook, dragging me through the mud, publicly accusing me of betrayal and casting herself as the tragic victim in her own soap opera. To her, I was the wicked stepsister, dashing her hopes of becoming the newest big thing, as she put it. Strangers on Facebook are saying I should have handled the situation better since we are sisters. Now, I am torn between family loyalty and the safety of my child, wondering if I should ever let Jessica back into our lives given her ongoing issues. Am I wrong for prioritizing my baby's safety? Or should I be more supportive of Jessica's unique career choice? Last update, Jessica has been calling and sending countless messages practically begging to return to our home after the whole Facebook drama died down. Today, I finally decided to take her call. I reminded her about how she took advantage of me and my husband and went even further to embarrass us on Facebook for something that was clearly her fault. I nearly lost my job. I warned her not to bother us ever again. Luke and I are prioritizing our own peace and stability and choosing our baby's safety. As a gesture of goodwill, I'm thinking of sending her some money, hoping she will use it to make better life choices. But definitely not in my house. You're not the a-hole, OP. You did your best for Jessica like any good sister. She was the one who took your help for granted, from overstaying her visit to not helping at all in the house. She gave you so many reasons to kick her out, but you didn't. At least until she decided to turn your baby's room into her room without your permission. The worst part is that she doesn't see anything wrong in any of the things she does. That's bad. People like that won't change. You're very kind for wanting to give her some money. Hopefully she will grow and change for the better. Story 2 My husband and I have three children, 25 female, 16 male and 13 female. Our oldest moved out three years ago with a boyfriend and got an apartment. They were together four years before that, so it wasn't like she ran off with some guy she just met. We supported her decision. She was old enough and working full-time. The issue is rent in our area has more than doubled on average since. Their landlord raised the rent 40% in the span of three months and they couldn't afford to stay there anymore. The issue is they weren't exactly swimming in cash before that. They don't really have enough for first, last and security with the market. Not that there's much to buy anyway in their price range. Their plan was to move in with her boyfriend's parents for a few months while they figured stuff out and saved up. But they won't let her come with. So they proposed an idea. She would move back in with us, him with his parents, and they would save up and be gone in six months top. The issue is me and my husband don't feel like that's appropriate. She's an adult now and she needs to learn to take care of herself, not relying on handouts from her parents. She offered to pay rent, but we would only do that if she agreed to pay the market average plus her share of utilities, which would mean she couldn't save up like she wants to. Because we aren't doing that, she's been forced to share a two-bed apartment with six other people, some of whom she finds sketchy. I feel for her, but I still think it's her responsibility. At this point, she doesn't call much anymore and I'm worried this may have impacted our relationship. You're the a-hole OP. She and her boyfriend got screwed over by the landlord and your response is to tell her that she can't live with you unless she lets you screw her over too. She will never forget that you weren't there for her in a time of need, for crying out loud. She offered to pay rent and even offered to put a time limit of six months on it. It's not like she asked you to let her live with you rent-free indefinitely. She is behaving like an adult who is going through a difficult time and is trying to be responsible when asking for help. You are behaving like judgmental parents who are disappointed that she didn't anticipate getting screwed by her landlord, as if she could have anticipated that. Now for some comments. You're the a-hole. Seriously, your daughter is an adult. 
but she is still your daughter. She's not relying on handouts. She's offered to pay rent. You're really gonna charge her the market average to stay at home? She even gave you a time limit. I think you're being unreasonable. You completely acknowledge that she was screwed over, but yet you're willing to let her struggle when you presumably have the space. There's wanting for her to learn to be an adult, and there's being unreasonable jerks. You're the a-hole. Don't think you ruined your relationship. Know it. You absolutely destroyed it. She needed you. She needed her family. She offered to pay rent and you, just like every landlord in the area, wanted to bleed her dry. Just know this. When you don't get an invite to her wedding or your grandkids don't know who you are, it's not her being petty. It's because if people can't support us at our worst, then they sure as heck don't deserve us at our best. She probably feels alone and betrayed by you. Her mother made her feel that way. Congratulations, you taught her not to rely on you. Worth it? Every time I read one of these posts, I feel suddenly obligated to take my parents out to dinner to thank them for giving a shit about me. Luckily, I have a pretty generous budget for it since I have parents who supported me when I was a young adult. Instead of trying to profit off of me or use my struggle as a chance to apply misguided principles, based on the bootstrap myth, your kid is willing to sacrifice to the point of living apart from a long-term partner so they can save up. Most parents would be proud of having raised such a responsible kid. You're the a-hole. Story 3 This is kinda long so please bear with me. I, 34 female, had a baby in 2019. I moved to my parents' home in January 2020 at my parents' urging because they wanted to be near the baby and help. I agreed because I needed the help and my husband was traveling frequently. The plan was to stay till April and on my return to my home to put my kiddo in daycare so that I could get some help. My brother and his wife stay with my parents and my dad and brother work in the family business. When the lockdowns happened last year, all of us got stranded in that house. Luckily, my husband was with us. Due to a lack of house help, which is the usual for us, a chore chart was drawn up. Despite my urging, my family told me to not take up too many responsibilities and that I should just take care of my baby. However, I insisted and took over a few light chores. My brother and his wife insisted that they be given the heaviest chores and he also insisted on being the only one to go out and sanitize any items that were brought in from outside. A few days in, I saw that my mom was clearly struggling with too many things to handle, so I told her to play with the baby in the evenings while I made dinner. My husband also stepped in to take care of the small but innumerable chores that come up with running a household. About three weeks into this arrangement, my brother and his wife went up to my parents and told them to tell my husband and I to either start pulling our weight or leave the house. They complained that they were the ones who worked the hardest and we did not even help in sanitizing the items. My mom offered to let a house help in because she knew how much we were struggling with parenthood to which they said that they don't care if their child dies of COVID but we do, so there will be no house help. Obviously, my husband and I were not happy upon hearing this and we decided to leave and return home. My parents did request us to stay back, but we were too hurt and the atmosphere at home was also not happy due to other reasons too. Since then, my parents have been after us to forgive my brother and his wife so that we can be a happy family again. My brother and his wife have made no overtures by the way, their reasoning being that they will ask for forgiveness when we are ready to forgive. They did send a gift for my kid's birthday through my parents and when they left it here despite us refusing to accept the gift, we mailed it back. Now every chance my parents get, they tell us to return home and let bygones be bygones etc. But my husband and I keep refusing. We have told my parents that we will visit them when the COVID situation improves and we can stay at a hotel. We have also told them that we will only visit if the brother and his wife are not there. My parents are super unhappy about this and my mom is calling me selfish for breaking up our family and not allowing my child to experience the joy of her maternal grandparents' home. So am I the a-hole for refusing to go back? Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. They want it both ways. They want to seem nice with doing all the work, but they are upset at the fact that they have to do the work. 
They were a-holes and clearly didn't see it. It's understandable that your parents wanted to blow over, but calling you selfish and blaming you is not right. Not the a-hole. Only people that broke up this family are your brother and his wife. Your parents are enabling them and to be honest, need to realize that adult children do indeed live independently. Your brother and sister-in-law are hilarious, not wanting to apologize or look for forgiveness unless the 100% get forgiveness. The sheer audacity and entitlement. Wow. Not the a-hole. They insisted on having the heaviest chores and your brother being the only one to sanitize things, then decided they didn't like the arrangement. They themselves suggested and tried to make out you and your husband to be lazy villains. If they were finding their self-chosen chores too hard to deal with, they could have just asked for help like mature adults. Accusing you of not caring if your child dies just because they can't put aside their pride and ask for help is appalling. And it was perfectly reasonable of you to leave the house rather than be cooped up with people like that.